So we're on video six um, of making this um, LED illuminated light, but not as a, this simple S. I'm trying to make a serif A, quite a more complicated design, and uh, this is where we left off last time. So I've got a fully defined sketch. You'll notice that uh, these yellow filled areas highlight when I mouse over them to show that they are selectable for extrusion. Um, okay, so there are in fact, there's actually one or two little things I need to just double check here um, before I go any further. First of all, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I'm going to move some dimension lines around very, very quickly. This is not essential, but it's just to keep the drawing clear and easily uh, legible. I'm going to bring that dimension line up a little bit and bring this one down a bit because I don't like the fact that those dimension lines were overlapping. This is a bit of a mess. I'm going to take that one further out like that. And I'm going to take this one further out like that. I'm feeling as if that is better now. Um, voila. I mean, do we need to have do we need to have all these dimension lines? I, I feel as if what we could do potentially is uh, delete that dimension line. Look, it's actually still fully defined. Can I delete that dimension line? Can I delete? that dimension line, it's still fully defined and it's almost as if all of those points are in alignment to this. In fact, if I select all of those points, you know, can I make those all horizontal? And it, it took that, did it? Did it take it? No, okay, I may have done. Anyway, but it's still fully defined. There's a few weird things happening here. Again, I think it's because I deleted these circles. I should have technically left them there, but I felt as if they were causing a bit of confusion. So was it the right thing to do? Maybe not, but this is where I am. Okay. Um, now, before I go ahead and extrude this, um, let's just see what's happening here. At the moment, I've just got in my timeline here, I've got this sketch. And if I just mouse over that sketch, you see it highlights all the details within that sketch. So that's everything involved in this sketch. Um, I'm now going to go to stop sketch in the top right corner and what this will now do is it will leave the sketch details. I expected it actually to go into 3D. Um, it didn't but anyway there, there's my sketch ready to rock and roll and you can see there are some dots here which yeah I think that's again related to the fact that we had those circles that got deleted. So anyway this is now ready for me to extrude, um, but I'm going to come back to my illuminated S and just show you what's happening here. At the moment, I'm still editing the sketch as well, so I'm going to stop that sketch. And notice here that this on the, on the timeline has got the original sketch and then it's got these other extrusions. So what I'm going to do is click and drag on this timeline bar and bring it back to after the sketch. So that now uh, is just the sketch and notice how similar it looks now okay there's a few more details here which I'm going to come back to but effectively that's the same thing um, if I look at what this first extrusion is doing it's giving me this thickness which is going to be effectively um, the the back the back part here of the 3d sketch um, because this is hollow this is shelled out okay um, and what I want to do here is is just double check the settings of this extrusion. So I'm going to right click on this, I'm going to go to edit feature and I can see that this has been done to a distance of 2.5 millimeters and interestingly it's negative 2.5 although in my mind that's kind of coming out of the front face there but Fusion 360 wants to uh, I guess see positive extrusion going into it. Anyway that's Fusion 360's choice so I'm going to apply the same 2.5 millimeter thick extrusion to this A. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go to the extrude option up here, or E is the shortcut. In fact, let's just press E. There we go. I'm going to select this shape, and I'm going to do a distance here of 2.5. And look, again, that's going into this cube, and I want it to come in to come out of the cube. So I'm going to come to the front of that and put in negative, and that's coming out of that that uh, out of the front face. So I've now actually got a 3DA and that is looking pretty awesome already I have to say. Like it, like it, like it. Okay, I'm going to come back to the S. Now notice I've then done, oh there's, I've also got a cutout down here. I'm not going to worry about that yet. Um, 
I've then got this second extrusion that gives me the rest of the the wall, the shelled wall. Okay, there it is. I could do this in different ways, but anyway, I'm going to do it as two separate extrusions. Um, and I've also got this little ledge, this little flat section down here appearing. Um, if I come back to the sketch, if I right click here and go to edit sketch, you notice that I've drawn here a kind of foot for the S to stand on. And obviously that's so the S doesn't roll away. But if I have a look at my illuminated A, I can see if I right click on the on the sketch here, I can see that this has got a flat base and I feel as if I don't need like a a little uh, stand for the A to sit on because it's naturally got its own stand. So let's stop the sketch here. In fact, actually, I, I need to edit the sketch because I need to add in this this wall thickness. Look, have a look on here. Can you see? I've got this wall thickness here. Come on, select. Ah, there. That's the wall thickness. That's what I need to create. So let's right click again here on this first sketch and I'm going to edit it. It's really important here. Just bear with me a second. I'm going to stop that. Don't create a new sketch. Don't create a new front sketch. Okay? Uh, because that is I'm going to create a new sketch down here and I'm going to start drawing a, a brand new drawing. I don't want to do that. I want to edit the original sketch. So I'm going to stop that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to delete that sketch because it's wrong. And I'm going to come back to my original sketch and I'm going to edit this. Okay. I need to do a, an offset um, to make this wall thickness. Let's come back to my illuminated S. And I can see that this offset has a thickness again of 2.5 millimeters. So all my walls to this 3D model all my walls here, this, this back wall here was 2.5 extrusion, and this wall here is also going to be 2.5, which means that there's a little shadow here, don't know whether you can see that, okay, that is going to be 2.5 millimeters. Okay, so here's my A, here's my A, yes, and I'm going to come to my sketch options, and I'm going to do an offset, and I'm going to click on this shape, um, and I'm going to do an offset here of negative 2.5 because it appears as if the positive wants to go outside the shape. No, I want to bring the offset in the shape. Now, can I add to this as well, this line here? It looks like it won't let me. Yeah, okay, notice that if I go to chain, it treats them all as separate lines. If I do chain selection, it treats it as one. And interestingly as well, no, that flips. How interesting. If I, if I deselect and select it again, it goes outside and it goes inside. Okay, fair enough. Oh, look. Oh, hang on a second. There's something else there as well. Offset. I can flip it as well. Okay, that's quite nice. I hadn't seen that. Okay, let's confirm that. Let's cut my wall thickness for the external profile of the A, and I also want to have this as well, uh, this, this little cutout here. Offset. Back to the offset menu. Click on this. Let's just go to 2.5. I won't do negative this time. Instead, now I shall flip it. Woohoo! And there we go. And that looks awesome. So now I'm going to stop that sketch. Okay, let's go back into 3D. There you go. Let's now do a, an extrude. Now, at the moment, I can't see my sketch. So what I'm going to do here in my little uh, browser here. I'm going to expand uh, the browser tree so I can see my sketch. And I think I'm also going to turn off that previous extruded body. And now what I want to do is I want to extrude this profile and this profile. Now, how far do I want to extrude these? I'm just going to pause the video for a second. Okay, so um, what I've done um, is I've just been to my electronics cupboard and uh, I've got, there we go, camera was a bit slow updating there. Um, I've got these two uh, USB sockets. So this is my mini USB socket, which I've used on this. Okay, so this is an old style uh, mini USB. I say old style, I mean, it's probably, you know, 15 years old, but yeah, I suppose that is a bit old. It makes me feel very old. Um, and that's probably not the style you'll want to work with. You'll want to work with a micro USB plug, and that's my micro USB socket. Um, I need to order some more of these. Um, and it's actually quite a bit smaller. Now, I mentioned earlier, 
in one of my previous videos how look you can see here um, kind of like a shadow uh, and that basically is the the front face of that micro that mini USB socket and there's some glue on there as well some glue gun that I used to hold it in got a bit carried away I think there didn't I um, and this this really you can see here this just squeezed in and uh, if I was working with one of these mini USB sockets again what I'd want to do here um, is make this extrusion wider here with the objective of you not being able to see this front shadow having said that if I work with this micro USB socket you can see here that this is quite a bit thinner now when I get more of these in stock will they be the same size will they be bigger uh, I'm not too sure but let's have a see this get my vernier gauge this is coming in at 15 millimeters it's actually 15.2 and this is coming in at about 18.2 something really important to highlight here okay well this is on the printed circuit board um, this is all this is pretty much spot on 15 this is spot on 18 standardized components will be designed to be metrically uh, perfect so that when you are designing you can rely on the thing the fact that all of these components will perfectly fit in the space that you provide for them in your in your design so this is not some random number this has actually been specifically designed to be 80 millimeters in in width there and the length of this is going to be another precise measurement yeah that's absolutely spot on 20 so in the factory these will these printer circuit boards will be manufactured to exactly 20 by 18 millimeters and you should work as a designer as a product designer in the same way everything should be standardized to nice numbers nice round numbers I say that of course and in my Fusion 360 file I'm <laughs> and my CAD file I'm working to um, half a millimeter well that's because of my grid settings of course but anyway I dive I diverse uh, let's come back to this I'm thinking that I need to make this thicker it's also going to make it more whoop, hang on a second I'm talking about this I hadn't switched my camera across I think I need to make this thicker because if I do work with one of these mini USBs or I work with micro USB in the end they're actually thicker I don't want this shadow to be cast so what was this this was 18 I'm going to and this was 25 I, I, hang on, having said that it's 25 with the acrylic sheet now let's come back to my s here uh, let's stop the sketch and let's have a look at what my extrusion was here this was 22 why 22 well I knew my acrylic sheet was going to be three millimeters and 22 plus three is 25 and 25 is a lovely number so that was my thinking so I'm thinking here of taking this up to 30 millimeters in thickness I don't want to go too thick because this still has to be 3d printed um, if I make it thicker okay it's using a bit more filament so I've got to make sure I'm on the left hand side here so you can see what I'm doing um, it would use more filament it would also take more time as well and I, and I really want to try and be able to 3d print these a bit faster so I don't want to make it too thick I'm going to make it 30 if I bear in mind that I've got a three millimeter thickness of acrylic I'm going to make this 30 minus 3 27 millimeters so that's going to be my new extrusion for this 3d letter a okay let's come back into here so where was I I'm going to go to extrude I'm going to select this profile and this profile these are my wall thicknesses the distance is going to be 27 millimeters um, again it's gone back into the drawing and I want it to come out of the drawing so clearly I'm going to have to make that negative and it says here make into a new body I don't want to do that um, I want to make it join the the backing thickness here but it, I can't at the moment because this original part of the body does not exist so if I make that reappear now notice now that, that Fusion 360 thinks I want to cut this out and which is why it's red no 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 I want to join it okay and that's going to give me this lovely 3D shape okay so let's just confirm that and there it is 
that's my 3D shape. Let's make my sketch disappear for a second. And if I want this to just be a little bit clearer to see, let's just come to my display styles, visual styles here, and I'm going to go shaded with visible edges. And now I can see how that is this beautiful 3D extruded A. Okay, so I still need to think here about where I'm going to um, mount my, my micro USB socket here and trying to make it so that I don't get this shadow but hopefully the fact that um, these these micro USB sockets are a little bit narrower and I've made my extrusion a bit deeper um, the shadow problem will not occur